Now 2A and 6A are each in their own way slightly more difficult than what we had a look at at the start, but what's great about them is we can think through the same kinds of strategies and see how they're useful. Now, right out the gate, here is 2A, right? We know at least we have these two potential strategies and we can choose either one. Um, both of them should work, but it's a matter of which one might be more efficient, which one might be quicker. Merrick, what do you reckon? The division. I agree with Merrick that division makes sense. How do we know that division is the most helpful one? What did we use here? Let me put that question back to what it was. What fact could we take advantage of? Merrick, I know you know because you suggested it. Could someone else tell me what we were looking at? Any recognition? Yeah. Two? What about it? It's a factor of six. Fantastic. Two, that's exactly right. Two is a factor of six, so I can divide both sides evenly, and I'll still be in whole number land, which is kind of nice, right? So let's go ahead and do it. I divide this side by two. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and write it. If you stop doing this, I encourage you to go back to it because it's so helpful. What do you get on the left-hand side? Yeah, I don't have that 2 anymore. I got rid of it by division. On the right hand side? 3. three. Fantastic. Now, at this point, remember, what I try to get is the pronumeral by itself on the left hand side. So the thing that's in the way of that is currently a 6. six. What should I do to get rid of it? I'll subtract 6 from both sides. Okay. So that leaves me with the takeaway x on that side. The negative. And then 3 take away 6 is? Negative. negative 3. So I've got two negatives flying around here. And so I want to get rid of both of them. What should I do to both sides? I should multiply or, or divide. They both do the same thing. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. Okay? That turns the negative x into just x. And it turns the negative 3 into 3. Now just a quick um, side note, some of you may have solved the problem exactly like this, but there is another way if you wanted to, you're like, gross, all these negatives flying around. I can go from this line here and get rid of the negatives right away. Right? Instead of getting rid of this 6, I'm going to try and get rid of this negative x. What should I do to both sides to get rid of this negative x? Now I could, I could do this like I did before, but I want to try and see if there's another way I can do this. I think I heard, Louise, could you repeat it again? All right, if I add x to both sides, right? Adding x to this, what happens to it? The minus x and the plus x. When you put them together, zero. So you just end up with the 6. But then I added x to the left-hand side, so I should probably add it to the right-hand side. Three, that gives me, ah. Oh, now, I heard 3x. That was what I heard. But that's not adding x to the right-hand side, is it? Yeah, this is multiplication, isn't it? Very good. So I should do something else. I should be writing plus, that's what I'm doing both sides, plus x. And now to get to the answer, which I know is true, I should subtract 3 from both sides. And this is the same as this. I just would normally write the x on the left-hand side. Any questions on that? Does that make sense? Anve, did you have a thought or a question? Yes, you absolutely could. So if you wanted... I could turn this top line into 12 take away 2x, and then off you go. Um, one of the reasons why expanding brackets is sometimes I try to avoid is because it always, sorry, take that back, it almost always makes your numbers bigger, doesn't it, right? Um, so your numbers get larger and there's more ways for errors to turn up. I like small numbers, they're good for my brain because my brain's small. Okay, last one, quickly, this is 6a and then the rest of the exercise I'm going to let you guys have a go at. Okay, so could you jot down this question with me? I know you're, most of you are not up to it, which is fine. But jot it down. Now, in this case here, this is a perfect example of where searching for a factor and dividing, not a good way to go, is it? Because you've got this 5 out the front here, you've got this 4. They're not going to play ball together, are they? So what was our other strategy? It's on the board in orange. I'm going to, starts with an E. I'm going to expand. I'll get rid of all the brackets, and then I'll be good to go from there. So can you please help me expand the left-hand side? What should I write down? 5x minus five. minus 5, fantastic. Make sure you do both of those terms. And then on the right hand side, let's expand that. 4x plus 8, plus eight. fantastic. Okay, from here, it's the same kind of problem we had before. Merrick, did you have a thought or a question? No, I Okay, we're not ready for the answer. I want the answer, but I want it after I know how I got there. Okay, let's have a look. Someone want to suggest what I could do here? Minus 4x. Okay, Krishan, what do you reckon? Plus 5. 
plus five, so that'll get rid of this number over here. So I'll write that as five x equals four x. That hasn't changed. Plus thirteen. So you can see the extra five where it's appeared. Uh, next step. Subtract 4x. I want all the pronumerals over here, right? So I will subtract 4x from here, leaving me with how many x's? Just one of them. Equals 13. Equals 13. I'm done. Okay. How are you feeling? How's your brain going? Is that all right? I'm confused. Which part are you confused by, Merrick? Because I, I actually just minus 4x straight away as um, so x minus 5 equals 8 and then x equals 13. Okay, let's just pause and make sure we know what Merrick's done, right? Uh, Krishan's suggestion, I think it was, was to add 5 at this point, which landed us here, okay? Merrick's suggestion was to not add 5, but to subtract 4x. Now, I'm just going to point out, and it was my fault because I didn't write it, when you have a look at what we were doing on each step, we expanded, Krishan said let's add 5, uh, who said take away 4x? A lot of you said take away 4x actually, right? That's what we did. Do you notice, Merrick has done this, he's just done it one step earlier. Did you see that? He's done one step earlier. But then at this point, what did he have to do? He had to plus five. He had to do the same things we did, but he just reversed the order. Now, not all things can be like this. You can't always change the order of things just because you want to, right? Like seven take away five, you can't just change the order of that and say five take away seven. They're not the same thing. But in many cases, and you've just stumbled on one of them, in many cases it doesn't matter which way you go about it. We all ended up on our x equals 13.